All right, ladies and gentlemen, I have us at 10 after the hour. Uh, Sid, are you back? Yep, I'm back. Okay, the show is all yours. Let's keep it going again. We did actually have one question I did want to bring up from uh, John Joseph from a little bit ago. Uh, can you have a second IDP? Yeah. Oh, I'll let you. Yeah. Go. I'll just let you answer that then. Thanks. Yeah, I was just responding on the chat. Yeah, we don't have any failover mechanism for the IDP certificate. So if your certificate expires, it is not going to fail over to any other IDP where the certificate is valid. Fantastic. Thank you very much. And it looks like most of the other questions have been answered by so. Therefore, I think we're ready to go ahead and let you resume. If I miss somebody's question, I apologize. Go ahead and throw the question out there again, and I'll turn the show back over to Shit. Sid, all yours. All right. Okay. So uh, we notice the logs on the GUI. Let's talk about best practice. So it's always a best practice to enable identity provider certificate validation. So this you can define it under uh, the SAML profile. So this is where I'm talking about under device. SAML identity provider. So you validate the service provider certificate over here. And also use certificate profile under authentication profile. So firewall will check the ITP certificate used to sign in SAML response or assertion if it is valid or signed by trusted authority if it's revoked or expired. So which username attribute do I need to configure on the auth profile for the firewall to extract the right username value? So you can, if you're not sure, you can use SAML message decoder and you can check the username if uh, like here in this case domain attribute is not present in SAML assertion then the user should always type it during the authentication that is UPN or SAM account name to make the firewall populate the right IP username and group mapping. So I just want to share one information over here. Uh, recently I was working with a customer who, who it was a new configuration was trying to configure SAML authentication authentication was actually successful but then gp was still not able to connect so what we noticed the user or the client customer was using ldap with saml so what happens when the user was trying to log in with his credential so like in our case i am typing username gp user at the rate GP lab. So this is the username I'm using. Similarly, the client was using something similar with an uh, email address to log into the GP. Under the system logs or RT logs, we were able to see authentication getting successful, but still uh, the user was not able to log in. The When we talk about LDAP, under the LDAP, the user was configured with SAM account name but then when the user tried to log into the GP user, the information goes to the IDP. IDP sends the username information with, with the SAML ACS URL. In that case, IDP was not actually normalizing it under the SAM account name. That's why authentication was not getting successful. So I think I have a document. Yeah, so this, when you're, configuring new configuration with SAML and LDAP. I'll share it in the chat as well. So primary username mismatch for global protect user authentication with SAML. What happens when you're using LDAP? The LDAP uh, may be configured in a uh, username in a different format. Like the in uh, the user's case, the username was defined in the domain slash username format. But when I'm typing on the global protect application, I'm actually typing my email address. So once the IDP receives that information, IDP sends the same username email information to the uh, firewall, and that's why there was a mismatch. So here, what happens? It needs to be formatted on the SAML source or use email as primary username attribute when you're talking about group or user attributes on the firewall. 
because if these are different you will not be able to authenticate you can still view the logs on the firewall and i've shared this article in the chat you can go to this article later as well if you're deciding to configure saml authentication with ldap and it's a new setup and it's not working when configuration everything is fine so you may also encounter this issue okay so troubleshooting guidelines okay let's go to the logs again with a live example so let's go ahead and log into the firewall i'll sign out Okay, this is my firewall. So this is where I have deployed my uh, global protect configuration. Uh, so this is the service provider in my case. Portal and Gateway both defined on the same firewall. Also remember, whenever you are troubleshooting, you always save that uh, firewall session logs. And when you are troubleshooting, uh, type show clock so that you know when you have started running those debug commands for authentication or whatever it is so you should always know the timestamp when you have run so that when you're going and checking it later you should know uh, this is the timestamp when i started running so you can verify the logs according to this timestamp on the gp app or any other logs on the firewall so we majorly discuss portal authentication and gateway authentication and how it will look on the firewall so on the firewall the log where you will be able to see details for authentication is odd log so if i need to view odd logs there are two methods i can run less mp log odd log and i will have the complete authentication logs present on the firewall and i can filter out as per the timestamp i'll go down or i can also uh, uh, type a keyword like this so if i type a keyword it will highlight that keyword lies and you can filter with timestamp all right but then if i'm doing a live version what i prefer and what uh, is easier i'll do a tail follow yes mp log or d log so it will show us a new log entry getting generated dynamically. So if I try to log in on the GP app now, it will show me the logs for the GP authentication. And if simultaneously, I'll, sorry, I'll just disconnect. So simultaneously, I'll be also collecting GP logs, right? So the best practice, if I'm troubleshooting GP, I'll be collecting GP logs in dump format okay one second i need to go to settings okay under setting under troubleshooting i'll be select it by default it is set to debug level but when you're troubleshooting you're uh, always recommended to take logs under the dump level so that if you're unable to find anything from your end you can share the same dump level logs once you have opened a ticket with the tag if you have not taken dump level the tag will come back and ask you to take it again so it will take your time it will take more of your time so better whenever you are troubleshooting always select it under dump level and then extract logs so i have selected dump level so once you have selected dump level you have to replicate the issue again else if you have already replicated and selected dump level after that there will be no log in dump level. So you have to uh, select dump level and then replicate the log again. 
so here i have selected dump level i'll tail the oddd log right now i don't have any authentication logs on the firewall let's go ahead and log in on my portal so i notice some log getting generated let's see what log is this you remember in our slides firewall generates saml request and redirect to the client idp what's the keyword pan auth rec saml create sso request let's see do we see it it on the firewall yep here it is pan auth request saml create sso request that means firewall is generating an sso request further you remember sso payload saml assertion uh, url and the idp url and the client getting redirected to the idp so this is my saml sso payload this is my saml acs url this is the url defined in idp it's not defined on the firewall let me see if i can log in back so you see here base url 10101443 10101443 i don't have any uh configuration on the firewall uh, where i can define this this is from the idp and then this is the idp url all right now we should focus on the redirection the client should be successfully redirected to the idp so this is the log this is my client ip redirected to this and it is using gp auth profile so my auth profile name is uh gp auth profile so it is taking the correct authentication profile so if it's a new setup if it is not you're not sure whether the uh, client is taking the current authentication profile sometimes when you start working uh, you may have a lot of configuration on the firewall you need to verify whether it is taking the correct auth profile you can verify it through this log as well so pan auth success okay i actually terminated the connection so i'll reinitiate the connection so that i'll let you know when i log in how it looks like oh, sorry okay i'll log in again i've also started an oddd log so this is the authentication request or sso request client redirected it once it is successfully successfully redirected we see a pop up message that logs will also view in the gps and gpa log let me log in gp user okay so my gp app is connected so let's go up to easily view i'll just copy the log and paste it in a notepad so that we can filter out it easily in the notepad instead of the cli
I think everybody's got to love Notepad++. It's one of the best utilities out there. Yep. I'm a Mac user, so I don't have it. <laughs> oh, but I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> yeah. So uh, now if, if you are having difficulty reading to the logs, because I do see this is only for one authentication attempt, and you see how many files of log, uh, lines of log it is generated, you can always filter out with the keywords. So once you have this presentation, you can always copy the keywords and filter out. So notice we have two SSO requests because uh, we logged in on the GP. One is for portal and the second one is for the gateway. So if I go back to the portal, is it? Oh, it's not taking me there. Okay, line one. It's on the top. Okay, so this is the one we are talking about the portal auth. We notice pan auth request, SAML create SSR request. This is what we also explained it over here. So SSR request getting generated, we will compare it with the SAML flow. 